What is time management? In this video, I'm going to share with you my perspective. I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to share with you my examples. And I hope to inspire you to manage your time more wisely and more effectively. So let's get started. So first of all, let me give you my definition of time management. It is the practice of planning and pursuing our priorities in an ever wiser way. It's a practice, meaning it's not that you take a course in time management and now you're going to be a better time management forever. Uh, you're going to be a great time management forever. I've been practicing time management for, gosh, um, more than 20 years. And I'm certainly better at time management now than I was back then. But I'm even better at time management now than even six months ago because I see it as a practice. I see it as something I can always get wiser in. And so that's what I really invite you to do as well is to don't uh, think that just because you you took you watched a video, took a course, you tried to apply it and it didn't work. Therefore, you are not meant to be good at time management. No, no, no. You practice and the practice is in planning. So learning how to schedule your day wisely to schedule your week, your month, make sure the most important priorities in your life and in your business are scheduled in. Uh, and then, and then, of course, pursuing your schedule, meaning on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis, are you uh, acting according to your plan? And of course, planning can always get wiser as you observe, oh, I should have planned more time for that, or oh, I should have not planned my Saturday so I can have a, have a day without plans, you know, or what, you know. So it is important to also have time off without plans so that you can give yourself the spaciousness to really rest and really um, renew your creativity. But it is, I think, important to plan sometimes and to learn how to pursue your plans to plan your priorities and to learn how to pursue them on a moment to moment basis, which includes graciously declining the external requests from other people um, that do not align with your priorities. Okay, it can be uh, requests from family, from friends, from colleagues, from acquaintances that do not align with your priorities, and also to gracefully decline or ignore the internal whims that are not in alignment with your priorities at this time. That's actually a very big challenge. Uh, time man, you know, conscious living, intentional living, and I believe living well is not about just saying, oh, I feel like doing this today, so I'm just gonna do that. Oh, I suddenly find this thing very interesting, so I'm gonna go and pursue that shiny new object, okay? Because you got to realize that as a human being, you have evolved to be very susceptible to shiny new objects. That's how our ancestors had to survive in the jungle and in, in, in the wild. We had to be very attuned to any, any new stimulation and kind of pay attention to that, make sure that's okay. But now in our technological society where shiny new objects pop up you know, all the time and new email, new ideas, new social media postings, new, new paths to pursue, we need to actually consciously ignore and evolve away from our jungle past where it was important to pay attention to internal whims and external demands and requests, okay? So, so it's about planning and becoming more wiser about your plans over time. So what are your priorities in life? That's the first question to start with. And you may want to pause this video and write down, what are your priorities in life? What are your priorities in business? What's important? What's truly important to you in your business? You may want to pause and write some of this and then go on. Now, let me tell you a story about priorities. This story you may have heard of, it's called the Big Rock Story, and I find it helpful to review the story every couple of months to remind me how true this is and to inspire me again to renew my priorities and to stay true to it, okay? So the story goes like this. A teacher in a classroom teaching priorities to his class brought out a big glass jar. 
And he also brought out a tray of rocks, big rocks. And he started to put these big rocks in this jar, okay? One by one. He actually asked his class, how many, how many rocks do you think I can fit in? Some, some students said maybe three. Some students said 12. You know, some students said somewhere in between. So he started putting these big rocks in the jar. And he turned out that he was able to fit six of these big rocks in the glass jar. So it looked like this. And now he asked his class, now is the jar full? And the, and the class looked at the, the jar carefully and said, yeah, you can't fit any more big rocks in there. So yes, the jar is full. And then the teacher said, actually, he took out a tray of sand from underneath the, t the, the desk, underneath his desk, and he said, actually, the jar is not full. And he proceeded to pour the sand into the jar, and the sand started to fill in the spaces in between the big rocks. And once the sand filled all the way to the top, now he said, the jar is now full. But notice this. If I had put the sand in the jar first, before the rocks, I could not have fit six big rocks in the jar. But only after I put the big rocks in did I fill in the sand, then both could coexist in the jar. So the lesson is, do not put in the sand first. Put in the, the rocks first. The rocks represent your priorities. The sand represents your internal whims, the things you feel like doing, or the, the external demands from other people that are not aligned with your priorities, okay? So remember, putting your big rocks first and then allow the sand in instead of letting the sand fill your jar first. So the question is, what are your big rocks and what are your sand? I encourage you to pause the video right now and just take a moment to write down, these are my big rocks and these are my sand in your life and in your business. And once you're ready, unpause this video and I'm gonna share with you what mine are, but I want you to write yours first so you don't get biased by mine. Okay, ready? Let me share with you what mine are. I have personal big rocks and professional big rocks and same thing with the sand. So my personal big rocks are my evening routine, which means I need to start early enough. And I think about my big rocks as the things that fit into my jar, which is my jar is my schedule, my calendar, because my priorities in life cannot be fulfilled unless I give, my, I give the proper time and energy to those priorities. Does that make sense? I can't just say I'm going to be healthy, but I don't give time and energy to my health. I can't say I'm going to be uh, build a successful business, but I don't give time and energy to my marketing, right? So, so that's why I think of my jar as my calendar. If it's in my calendar and I practice pursuing being faithful to my calendar, then I fulfill my priorities. I live them. I, I manifest them in my life. So my big rocks, my evening routine. I need to start my evening early enough, my evening routine early enough, meaning, you know, get ready for bed, uh, you know, make sure that the, the kitchen's cleaned up, things like that, floss, my hygiene, all these things. I need to start that early enough if I want to get to bed early enough so I can get enough sleep for the next day. So that's really my first big rock is start my evening early enough. And I actually, um, for many years, I actually had an evening alarm. Not only do I have a morning alarm, I have an evening alarm, which I think is even more important to, to wake me out, out of the evening trance is to start my evening routine. My morning routine is very important as well. Things that allow me to um, start my day from a more mindful, uh, spiritual priorities um, place, okay? Walking my dog, obviously a big rock that I need to put in my calendar, otherwise I won't get the quality time with, with my dog uh, and quality time for my health in terms of walking. Um, anyway, some other things that I put into my schedule so to keep my balance and my equanimity and my health. Bits of reading anchored throughout the day uh, so that I actually make progress on reading books. Otherwise, uh, my books just keep piling up. So I just, you know, every, throughout the day, I take five minutes here and there um, before certain things and after certain things to do some reading, to make some progress in my books. I enjoy it, uh, and not just books, but also reading the, my in internet bookmarks that I found were important websites. Okay, I'm gonna go back and read this. 
I also spend time doing that. Sometimes it's books, sometimes it's bookmarks and on the internet. Okay, uh, dinner and media, uh, sp basically spending time with, with my wife. Uh, we enjoy watching certain shows that make us laugh and relax, uh, having dinner together. Uh, evening dog walk, weekends off of work, very important, and evenings off of work as well, so that I can have the spaciousness of not having plans, especially my Saturdays, completely open. No professional plans on my calendar, no personal plans on my calendar. Totally open so I can rest my um, calendaring uh, mind and just have that spaciousness to renew once a week. And I also take vacations once every six weeks. I take one week off, no plans at all, no professional plans, and I try not to have any personal plans. Maybe, you know, meeting with friends here and there planned, but just have that spaciousness of re true rest and renewal so that I can let myself kind of go, let my willpower just go so that I can um, have that spaciousness to be creative, renew my creativity again. And of course, trips to see family are important as well. Okay, my personal sand. Okay, this is playing games on my iPhone. Sometimes I can get too addicted, so I know that if I do that, it can eat away at my big rocks time, right? So I gotta make sure my big rocks are done and maybe on the vacations or in the weekends, then I can indulge and play a game which can suck up an hour or two of my time. But, but I gotta get my big rocks in first and then let the sand fill in. Watching TV at night, making sure my work is done and then watch TV. Um, I, I try not to work on the nights and weekends, right? If I follow my big rocks, then I don't have to follow, work on nights and weekends. But if I don't, I let the sand fill in, then I end up working, right? Or getting involved with family drama, I try not to. Um, only you know on vacations when I see family, then I can get involved. But during my regular time, I try to let 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 each person uh, learn how to solve their own their own issues before I step in. Okay, um, my professional big rocks, preparing for my client meetings, of course, very important after client meetings to have a time to write the journal what what the clients found useful uh, that's so helpful for client for content creation making more videos and blog posts based on what really helped my client so that i can serve more people with those ideas and those exercises uh, rebooting my energy i've talked about energy reboot before so you may want to watch that video doing my social media caring during lunches um, checking out my you know my facebook notifications once a day during lunch and also in the evening um, when I totally complete with everything or on the weekends when I'm totally complete then I can do social media as well I call it social media caring because basically I'm liking people's postings and I'm commenting on things if I have time creating creating regular videos and blog posts okay like like this video right and writing my blog posts very important professional big rock it um, continues to hone my thoughts and my ideas and helps me organize my my ideas to share them to help as many people as I can to help my clients as well working on my book basically collating my blog posts and editing them into my book continuous service improvement improving the how I work with my clients so that it's even more effective how I run my my group program so it's even more effective okay sending a weekly newsletter and a monthly newsletter this link just goes to my my email at georgecow.com slash email if you haven't yet um, seen my website and and link, uh, opted in there if you wish to um, so uh, so that's important my quarterly launch I have an email list just for my people who want to know when I'm launching my next group program or when I'm available to take on clients again that type of thing um, that's important to, to let my, my launch list know on a regular basis if I'm ready to serve more clients or if, I'm, if I have room in my groups, things like that. Twice yearly to update my website. Now this is something a lot of people let languish, but I put it in as my professional big rock. I plan it into my calendar twice a year. Okay, let's take a, let's take a comprehensive look through my website, which pages need to be updated, and then schedule that into my calendar to gradually update my website, the ones that, the pages that do need it. Quarterly website user interview, I'll put the link in to, to show you what that means. And quarterly niche interview, I'll put that link in. So even though I am pretty clear about what my niche is and I'm pretty happy about my website, I know I can always use improvement. That's why I'm always improving myself and I'm always improving my niche, my offerings to be even better. My professional stand, 
checking Facebook and Google Plus notifications more than once a day, that can then take me away and de de detract me from having a focus. Or doing some web research right when I have some question, I just immediately go and do research usually is not a good idea because that can suck up another half hour, another hour. So I got to be careful. If I have a question, I write it down on my to-do list so that when and then I categorize that item at the end of each day, I ca categorize my to-do list, put it in the right um, big rock time in my calendar so that, oh, it's like I have a question about marketing. Well, I put it in my marketing time so that next time I'm working on my marketing, I can look at that question and do some research on it, right? Rather than doing it right then and there when I have the idea, okay? Uh, commenting in, in online groups when it's uh, not my client group, when it's not my mastermind or my, my group program, um, I do that when I have extra time, but not as something that I do to escape my big rocks. I have to be careful about that. So I hope that's helpful as my examples. I look forward to, if you want to, please comment underneath this video to share with, with me and with us, this, the community that's watching this video, what are your big rocks? What are your sand? You, if, you, if you care to share about that, if you are open to sharing that, I'm sure that will help other people who are watching this get some ideas and you can also get some ideas from other people as well. I hope that this video, I hope that you apply this video, please do apply this, the ideas in this video to improve your time management so that you can really use your precious life, your precious energy and time to serve your higher purpose and to really fulfill your life's greatest goals.